joy of love, Ephraim Feely. Good morning. Welcome to Radio Maria Ireland. Father Eamon McCarthy back at the microphone here in the guest studio once again and in front of the camera on Facebook and YouTube live. A shout out, wave to everybody on camera. And thanks indeed to all of you listening in this morning on this Wednesday morning, the 22nd of uh, September. And nice to have your company. And it's lovely, a great privilege for us today. We have begun our 40 days. And 40 nights, I'll just move the mic a little bit closer to me here. They give out to me sometimes for not being heard properly. Uh, 40 days and 14 nights of perpetual adoration here at the studio in our chapel. Now, please don't come randomly to the door. It, uh, <laughs> it tends to overwhelm uh, the premises. Um, you know, we have it's we have plenty of space, but we need to measure how it is that uh, people come and visit. Please do get in touch with us ahead of time so that we can schedule a visit or if it is you have a particular time in mind, we can work around these things and we would love to see you. And if you would like to just uh, give us a call and uh, connect with us, if you'd like to come and spend a bit of time in adoration, we'll pass those details on to John, who's organising the schedule and the timetable and the route for people praying. And he was telling me this morning that the one uh, time of the day which isn't as easy to get people to be able to come and attend, believe it or not, is the morning time. So, you know, in between uh, Mass and, say, lunchtime or two o'clock. So Holy Mass is at 10 when I'm here uh, in the building. And so between then and 2 p.m. or so seems to be the hardest time to get people to come. So there's a thought. Uh, there's uh, gaps there. If you want to come and pay a visit to Radio Maria Ireland to the studio here, uh, why not pencil yourself in there for a morning or two worth of prayer in the Adoration Chapel and come and see us. Now, the number to call, please, 14 one two three four five six plus three five three one four one two three four five six we do like to hear from you as i say so please do get in touch with us please do connect in and please do let us know ahead of time and when it is that you would like to come you'll be more than welcome we just have to manage the numbers and manage the movement of people as you well understand i'm sure and thank you for that. Thank you. And thanks indeed to all who have already signed up uh, for uh, morning and night time. Uh, John was saying, I think the night hours um, for the first week or so, he has volunteers lined up, which is absolutely excellent to see. As time goes on, we'll certainly need more help. So again, if you would like to join us for 40 days and 40 nights of prayer before Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament, please do. And I have ambitions certainly to share with you on Facebook and on YouTube live moments of prayer. And I do hope we can we can try it this afternoon. I do hope so uh, for our Divine Mercy Hour. Uh, if we can uh, get Father Jamie to go to the chapel there and we can organize the microphones and arrange that, we'll see how that uh, unfolds. We've tried it before. It um, has just been a little bit between downstairs and upstairs can be a little bit tricky, <clears throat> but we'll see what we can do. We'll certainly see what we can do. We would love to be able to share that live with you from the studio chapel as well, especially to those of you who might not be able to come visit the studio, would otherwise love to come. Um, but you can join us remotely for that, too. So keep tuned for that. We'll get that organized and set up as best we can, too. Now, what a journey uh, I have had and uh, Kathy O'Leary and all our wonderful volunteers, Patricia and Anne. I'm going to leave somebody out and I'll get in trouble. Uh, Eileen was with us. Margaret Griffin uh, came along too. Thanks to um, Aidan's brother, uh, Daniel, Aidan's parents too, um, who came along to, to share with us. Jerry and um, Bertie uh, came along to help. And who else did I miss out on anyone? We had some and some of the leaders turned up as well locally in Charleville to help us with our promotion work last Saturday and Sunday. And big, big thank you to Canon Donal O'Mahony and to Father Anthony Sheehan uh, for facilitating and accommodating us. And the two lovely Sarah Christians in Charleville as well, uh, Eileen and Jackie. Very good to us indeed and very kind. So what a lovely visit we had to Charleville. Met lots of lovely people there and were treated with great kindness and great welcome and met some uh, lovely souls who were so encouraged and pleased indeed to be already listening into Radio Maria. Well, I'll chat a bit more about that. Uh, please God, at half past 12, uh, please God, Cathy will be able to join me and we'll uh, keep Sarah's little slot, join the team 
we'll keep that going as best we can. We went to Can Turk, of course, on Tuesday and uh, yesterday. And uh, thanks to Father Toby Blewett, to uh, Deacon James Sheehan, who was there as well. And just so nice to meet uh, so many dear friends uh, in Can Turk. And, um, you know, to reconnect with a bit of my past 15 years since uh, I went to Canterbury, started in Canturk for a two year stint. Uh, and just where did those 15 years go? I have no idea. So we're travelling around the country. As you know, we've been to Wexford. We've been to Littleton near Thurles in Tipperary. Uh, we've been to Yall. We've been to Middleton. We're really uh, storming around Cork County there in my own diocese of Cloyne. We have our sights set a further field, certainly on Kerry. Uh, we've got some friends in the north, please God, Derry, maybe in the offing and Cavan, we are hoping, and maybe even out to Sligo uh, as well. Uh, so keep an ear in, keep an eye out, and we'll let you know how that's going to transpire. We have local um, volunteers or local enthusiasts who want to help us out. So do please get in touch with us if you would like us to come and visit your parish and you can help facilitate things and that we can get it organised of a, of a weekend, I think would be the, the preferred spot. And we can arrange directly with the parish priest there. It's better we found with with um, experience now as we're going along, we found it's better if we can make direct contact from one of us here at the radio with the parish themselves and certainly if you are there locally just to bridge that gap a little bit too is very helpful to make an initial approach and we'll certainly make all the arrangements and certainly if I can go we found that it can be a help in parishes if uh, for instance the weekend uh, and yesterday too a priest gone away on retreat meant that I uh, covered a handy gap where it wasn't possible or just difficult for that uh, more demanding for the priests otherwise to cover all those gaps. So uh, I can be of service in a parish setting in that way to give a priest a little breather from his ministry too. So that's a little bonus uh, extra if it is that uh, a parish priest would like us to come and, and visit too. So it's been lovely and very fruitful and just great blessings uh, to meet and greet so many people. So a little bit more about that at half past twelve on join the team and Cathy will share some of her insights and thoughts too and again we've met some really wonderful people who are already listeners or who are anxious maybe to connect in and become regular listeners too and the number of prayer intentions um, there are still a, a number of them to be put into our prayer uh, whatsapp prayer group to be remembered I've kind of divided them out over the days because there's just so many of them so we'll finish putting those in, please God, in today's group and remember them, especially at the Divine Mercy Hour as well, all of your prayers. So it's been quite the journey and uh, quite a blessing and quite a privilege uh, indeed. So the number is here to get in touch is 089 if you'd like to uh, WhatsApp or text us here. Again, to telephone, Mary's on the phone downstairs. Do give a call, is 014 one two three four five six if you're in the north or outside of ireland plus three five three one four one two three four five six plus three five three eight nine four six seven two thousand and by all means please do uh, drop us a line send us in a message here by post we're at saint anthony's business park ballymount road dublin 22 um, yeah, I to, uh, I'll have to write down or get a bookmark there to remember the postcode. Somebody suggests we shouldn't do the postcode. I think it is the case now that you can just write the postcode on the back of an envelope and it should find it. I, d I should find the address, but I wonder how that works for the actual postman on the ground. Um, don't know. Shout out anyway to Joe Hearn. Met Joe. He's the local postman there. Bundle of energy is Joe in Kenturk. Uh, just on his feet and driving on all the time knows every house and every corner of Kenturk I think in his postal round <coughs> excuse me and he's the sacristan in Lismire Church there as well wonderful man I didn't know he told me he got a Benny Morenti medal there of late and well deserved too and Sister Philomena the wonderful sacristan that was indeed in Kenturk too lovely to see these these wonderful people giving years and years and years of service to the church with great fidelity 
and being awarded with that Benny Murray meaning good merit uh, medal on behalf of the Pope uh, with a papal um, scroll that accompanies that too as well fabulous uh, so well done to Joe nice to meet him yesterday and paid a visit then to the former parish priest uh, to his grave sadly Father Jackie Corkery and Father Jackie was well known around uh, Cork County a great rack on tear kind of a Shanachie and a bit of a prankster I suppose sort of he used to tell these stories um, one of them was a famous one it's just the way he tells the story that was so amusing as much as the story itself he was saying one day how this is a number of years ago now when um, online telephone calls and, and video calls and things were just coming into into um, into play or into practice and so he had a nephew I think or a niece living in China, Shanghai, I think, anyway. And uh, he called them up and they said, look, uh, and there's all these video calls. And he said, well, look, whatever you do, you know, try and keep the voice down a little bit. The baby's sleeping. So they, their new baby was uh, getting uh, having a nap. And uh, sure enough, the conversation went on. And it's again the way he tells the story. But all of a sudden, his dog started yelping and yowling and barking his head off. <laughs> and the barking of the dog in Ahabolog or wherever he was in, in <laughs> remote part of Cork woke the baby in China and this was the great amusement that the dog was barking so loudly uh, it was heard in Beijing or Shanghai or wherever it was he just had a lovely way of telling these simple stories and he'd bring them into his homilies and you know with great mirth attached to it as well so dear uh, Father Jackie, Canon Jackie Corkery, I just want to visit his grave, say a little prayer there that all his good deeds and the wonderful work he did, even in great, um, you know, ill health towards the end and faithfulness, that uh, that will be rewarded indeed in, in eternal life. So like that, you know, it's nice to revisit these places, nice to remember people of faith and people who've gone before us. Um, there's a great family sense about it. And that's what the radio, again, is my hope and ambition. We get to know so many of you and uh, you are part of this wonderful family of faith and prayer and fellowship and that we continue to remember one another and contribute and share and encourage each other in faith, you know. So very good. Archbishop Eamon Martin was uh, celebrating Mass for the centenary of the Legion of Mary of late. This is from catholicbishops.ie and uh, a little bit from his homily there on the occasion. Of course, Archbishop Eamon is a wonderful supporter and promoter and encourager of the activity of the Legion of Mary and the wonderful lay apostolic mission and movement that it is so much akin to um, the, the, the work of Radio Maria too. So much like it indeed. Um, so uh, Jesus was under no illusions that the good news would face many obstacles, opposition, persecution, ridicule, and even death. So that's what we learned from the gospel, of course. So he refers to the brothers and sisters of the Legion present, remembering the day you first made your legionary promise, praying to the Holy Spirit with the Legion standard in your hand, declaring your entire dependence on Mary as mother of your soul, as you undertook to be her soldier and her child. That's the Legion prayer, a promise that after a three-month three probation membership, Legionaries consecrate themselves to Our Lady in that way and undertake the promise. And um, it's a, interesting that Legion of Mary promise is addressed not to Our Lady, but to the Holy Spirit. And he quotes the words. It's a lovely, lovely passage from the Handbook of the Legion. Most Holy Spirit, I, desiring to be enrolled this day as a legionary of Mary, yet knowing that of myself I cannot render worthy service, do ask of you to come upon me and fill me with yourself so that my poor acts may be sustained by your power and become an instrument of your mighty purposes. Like I often say with the Legion, you can just substitute Legion, just take remove that name if 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 that you know idea of belonging to an organization or association is you know it seems to get and just substitute Catholic in there, you know, and desiring to be enrolled this day as Father Billy is chatting around about baptism, or enrolled as as a Catholic, knowing that of myself I cannot render worthy service. 
to ask of you to come upon me, fill me with yourself so that my poor acts may be sustained by your power and become an instrument of your mighty purposes. So I, I always feel that you, you, you can just remove Legion of Mary if you want and just put in Catholic Church or Catholic. That's what it, it certainly endeavors to towards. So taking in my hand the legionary standard. So legionaries take the vexillum. It's, it's uh, the image of the Holy Spirit coming upon Our Lady to the world that adorns the altar of every Legion of Mary meeting. I stand before you as her soldier and her child and I so declare my entire dependence on her. She is the mother of my soul. Lovely quote there from the Archbishop from the Handbook and the Legion Promise. And again, some would find it troublesome, the idea of that we would become her soldier, uh, our soldiers of Jesus, soldiers. And confirmation suggests that idea of becoming soldiers, militant. Now, not and have to banish from your thoughts and your head and, and your heart these ideas of aggressive militancy, tanks and guns and, and high-powered jets and bombs and all these, this ugly, violent militancy. Rather, it's the militancy that you see depicted on the face and the image of St. Michael the Archangel. And next time you come across a picture or a statue of St. Michael, uh, study closely the features on his face. You'll see him often standing on the devil and holding a chain and binding the devil with his chain, holding his sword aloft as if to strike at the devil. But look closely at his face and you'll see nothing but serenity. You won't see a grimace. You won't see sort of a violent disposition on him. He'll be dressed in his armor and he'll be quite serene and that it takes little effort to subdue the evil one. And all it takes is the threat of the weapons he's carrying in all serenity to keep the devil at bay. Now that you can simply just transfer that idea to, again, the serenity that we ought to have knowing that the Lord is in charge, no matter what the opposition, no matter what the evil that besets us, God, with God on our side, who can be against? And the weapons that we wield will be certainly our rosary, uh, the power of the grace of baptism and confirmation, a frequent reception of the Holy Eucharist and confession, uh, and then indeed all the wonderful sacramentals that, that we use, such as the miraculous medal, the crucifix, of course. Um, and all of these things that we stay close to keep us at, keep evil at bay and keep the devil, as it were, subdued. His influence upon us is greatly lessened. doesn't mean that we'll be without temptation. Um, that's inevitable. That's a, a welcome to the human race moment. <laughs> no one, even the Lord himself was free of temptation, but we have the means whereby to resist temptation and to be victorious, even in small things, over the over the devil. So the Legion promise and just that whole Legion um, engagement as, as a soldier is intended in that light, not again with militancy, clenched fist, or waving banners, or anger, or aggression, none of those things. It's just in, in serenity and peace in communion with Our Lady that she would have stood, no doubt, wrought with sorrow, wrought with grief watching her son die, but with serenity. She wasn't lashing out. She wasn't giving out. She wasn't rallying against all those who were putting the Lord to death or those who rejected him or the sins of those, my sins, of those who put the Lord to death. Rather, no doubt, she was weeping and being crucified in her heart for that. That's the kind of militancy we're speaking of when we speak of the church militant, overcoming evil still, but again, not with aggression, because violence begets violence. We saw St. Peter fell at the first hurdle there in the Garden of Gethsemane. He drew his sword and he cut off the Malchus's uh, right ear, the servant of the high priest, uh, and Jesus healed it. Put your sword back in its scabbard. Those who live by the sword will die by the sword. No doubt he threw his sword away after that. I, I imagine we don't know. We're not told. But you can imagine that he would have, you know, 
stumped it <laughs> thereafter. You know, I'd, I'd say St. Peter was as much stunned by that miracle and that lesson as the, the servant who's right here had been cut off. It's a lovely moment that's depicted in The Passion of the Christ, that movie, if you've seen it, uh, where the servant is just sort of staggered that all of a sudden his ear was, his hands are covered in blood, but his ear is better. <laughs> you know, um, extraordinary. So that idea of militancy. So uh, the Archbishop uh, speaks about spiritual childhood, this dependency, as it were, then on Our Lady and on the Holy Spirit. Uh, we rely on, on the grace coming from them. So uh, reminding us of the little way of St. Therese and that spiritual childhood is, is so fruitful. And he says you only have to look to the Legion of Mary and its humble beginnings of 15 people gathered around a small altar of the Immaculate Conception a hundred years previously and see today how the Legion of Mary and its members have touched the lives of millions of people in almost every country in the world. You know, four million active members, 70 million auxiliary. I'm not sure if, if there is a statistical final analysis of that but it's it's an approximation that i'm sure isn't that uh, inaccurate you know uh, a great army he says of spiritual children of mary engaged in an outpouring of apostolic work door-to-door -door evangelization parish and hospital visitation reaching out to the marginalized in prison and on the streets gently teaching and explaining the catholic faith and all this under the guidance of the holy spirit and the protection of our Blessed Lady. And that accurately describes all good Catholic action and indeed our work in Radio Maria very clearly and closely too. We have a Legion of Mary Presidium attached to the radio station now, Queen of Radio Maria it's called. And the bulk of the Legion work is the work of promotion that we're doing, you know. So, uh, and it is reaching out to the marginalized, reaching out to the needy and the poor and gently, as he says, teaching and explaining the Catholic faith. That's exactly what we're doing here in Radio Maria. So every time you participate in that work, letting others know, uh, interacting with us here, again, that's animating that, that militancy. And again, not devoid completely of anger or aggression. It's being putting ourselves forward in faith, engaging with our faith. And this is why we encourage this here on the radio so often. We, we want you to engage in the faith because as you do, it brings you life. It brings you, it, it, it you know, it gets us up out of any sort of lethargy or out of any um, hesitancy to, to proclaim the gospel. We, we shouldn't be shy about that. We shouldn't be slow about that. And the radio is just simply a great means to just initiate that. So spiritual childhood of Jesus and Mary, Archbishop Amon says, does not, of course, mean spiritual weakness. Anything but that. Because, again, I've known over the years leaders of extraordinary courage, doing absolutely heroic work and would have started out, you know, in all sort of humility. You know, you don't set out from the outset to become this kind of brave witness to the Lord. It's, it's a grace that comes with the work. As your promise puts it, you are not only Mary's children, you are her soldiers and under the Holy Spirit, soldiers for Christ. A legion equipped for a battle against evil, godlessness, selfishness and all the sin and despair that Satan sows in the world. Lovely words there from the Archbishop. And he refers back to the Gospel then as well, how the Lord himself would be delivered into the hands of men and put to death. Um, and how the Book of Wisdom indeed echoes the same thing, those who would lie in wait for the virtuous, the godless, that's there in the Book of Wisdom, putting to the test and endurance to the proof of those who would wish to s live the faith. So be sure that you know you're on the right path when you start getting hassle, when you start getting aggro, when you start getting resistance to practicing and living your faith. And Frank Duff himself had plenty of it. He had it in spades right throughout his life. It was, it was, and he had resistance from places where you wouldn't think he should get resistance, uh, notably from the church. Um, but it all came good in the end. He was faithful. He was obedient. 
And as the Archbishop says, the likes of Edel Quinn and Al Filam, again, great saints in waiting, each of them heroically, in Edel's case, heading off to Africa, and Alfie's case, uh, heading off to Latin America and just doing heroic works as well. So there's our, our task. And I like this quotation the Archbishop offers too, that in the handbook, we must clothe ourselves in the armor of God, must have loyalty, courage, discipline, and endurance, but equally walk with love and sympathy, be ready to finish the course, and be prepared to serve without limitations. So lovely that Archbishop Eamon there has uh, his handbook in his hand, and he's, he's drawing from this treasure of amazing insight and, and uh, spirituality that Frank Duff uh, has to offer. So very good. We'll pause for a little uh, interlude now, if that's OK as well. And I invite you again to participate. Send in your text messages, send in your emails. Uh, by all means, do get in touch with us. We would love to hear from you. Uh, let me see here now. I just open up our chat to Kisses here. Oh, I see Tara has already given me an option here. Uh, oh, some lovely ones here as always. Maybe the first of the two, uh, Tara, please. Ubi Caritas by Maurice Durufle. Of course, Ubi Caritas, where charity is and love is, of course, God is there. And it's a, an animating principle, too, of our faith, and not just those of the Legion of Mary, too. So do please get in touch. Uh, let me see here now. Um, oh, yes, uh, Geraldine is there asking a question. I'll touch in on that after the break, Geraldine. Thanks very much for sending that in. And uh, hello to Nanso and Gjorge, if I'm pronouncing your names correctly, watching there on Facebook as well and giving us, dropping us a little like and a comment. So like, share, follow and subscribe on our social media. Again, 089 is the text and WhatsApp number and 014-123456 to give a call here to the studio. So, Durufle's Ubi Caritas. Thanks, Tara. About 30 seconds left, Father. I think that's a low D or something in there. It's, <laughs> it's way down. It's a beautiful piece. We used to sing it uh, in, in our choir in the seminary, that it would be carried as a beautiful piece as a, as a post-communion reflection. 
course, peace music. Thanks, Tara. Uh, the roof lays ubi caritas where God is, and uh, there is love. So just replying to Paula's uh, text here on Facebook. Uh, thank her message there. Thanks, Paula. Uh, she was just uh, speaking about the camera angle there for our little bit of spontaneous uh, adoration live feed uh, this morning. So we'll we'll fix that next time we go live. We'll just arrange the camera properly there, Paula. So thanks very much for that. And uh, thanks, Dermot. Well, Dermot's in touch. We were chatting last week uh, about the traditional Latin mass and uh, how the Pope has sought to uh, give authority to the l- bishops locally uh, to um, grant permission to the celebration of the tra- traditional Latin mass. And uh, Dermot is a great lover of the, the Mass in the Old Rite, as it's sometimes called as well, the Tridentine Rite. And indeed, I've been to many such a Mass myself in my younger days. And it's the, it's the reverence, certainly the beauty of it, the sense of connecting with tradition. Uh, I can certainly, I'm with you there, Dermot, uh, all the way on that. But I don't think I, I'd, be, I'd hold the, the same view as, as you mentioned there, your former novice master. Um, that it, 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 what the Pope is doing is trying to, again, realign, I would say, any misdirection in relation to the traditional Latin Mass that might veer towards too much of a, uh, a fixation, perhaps, with, with the liturgy of the past and somehow disqualify or maybe set up an opposition with that of the Novus Ordo, because um, that wouldn't be a healthy thing either. So I, I don't see the traditional Latin Mass ever falling into disuse. I can certainly see it continuing by all means. But it's just that bishops will exercise their rightful authority in just safeguarding the tradition of the church and directing it along proper lines. One of the dangers is that uh, and we've seen this, and I know the Holy Father has seen this too, with some of those who would have this uh, love for the traditional Mass in the traditional form, would um, use it somehow as a, a means of, of undermining the authority of the church and the liturgical organic growth and development uh, within the church too. Um, and I don't think that's a healthy thing either, uh, leaning too far one way or, or the other. But I do agree with you, Dermot, and something I've mentioned before as well, how there is ample uh, work <laughs> to be done in stopping some of the abuses or, or you know, pointing out and, and redirecting and correcting some of the abuses that take place in the Novus Ordo or the new rite of the Mass. Uh, that is evident, certainly, and that's an ongoing task and a very difficult one. As I know myself, I've tried to gently redirect things and it meets with resistance too. But the answer isn't necessarily just to fall back on the traditional form in order to solve, as it were, all of those questions. So it's a difficult one, Dermot, and it's an ongoing conversation. And I'm so glad of your great love for Mass and the traditional form. And we do hope indeed that we will get the permission necessary here in Radio Maria to continue our connection with that too. It will rely on the Archbishop's advice and direction on that and will be obedient to that as well. Um, but it is lovely indeed, These the Institute of Christ the King, there are some um, the Benedictines again in Stam Mullen would have Mass in the traditional form and again doing these things just so worthily, uh, which is good. So thanks for that, Dermot. It's a, a very interesting topic uh, and to return to as well in, in terms of the liturgy and our understanding of the liturgy as well. Geraldine was in touch too. Thank you for that, Geraldine. And she poses the question. She says, Father Eamon, is my confession valid? Uh, the priest uh, seemed not to know what I was going on about. He was quite elderly. Um, so just wondering, was the confession I made valid? Um, that's a great question, Geraldine, because it also applies um, to the occasion, perhaps, when it seems that a priest uh, isn't celebrating the sacrament worthily. God forbid and God between us and all harm there too. But uh, it can be that a priest might hold rather heterodox views, perhaps, or um, interesting if he's out of ministry. I don't know if you knew this, but that if a priest is out of ministry and he's lost his faculties, if there is a situation where it's a person is in danger of death, he can exercise, uh, give absolution to somebody who is close to death, maybe a roadside accident or something. 
uh, or he's called over somebody's dying, even though he's not practicing as a priest and he doesn't have permissions, he can still validly hear and absolve in those circumstances in danger of death. Um, so if a priest, for one reason or another, perhaps is unworthy, or in your case, Geraldine, that he doesn't seem to know what's happening, uh, elderly and whatever. Or, do you know, I've had experiences, maybe you've had them too, where you go into confession and the priest is just, again, disconnected, it seems, or, or not interested or fed up or hungry or tired, hangry. <laughs> and it's just the time he's having a bad day and whatever. And you leave confession thinking, that didn't feel right. That just didn't seem right. And the truth is and the reality is that you need have no worry whatsoever. For once the priest does what the church intends to do by absolving sin and exercises his ministry using the words that he is intended to say uh, through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace and I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In fact, I think all that's necessary is for the priest to say, I absolve you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, if it is that, again, it's a danger of death situation, somebody has been, you know, lifted into an ambulance or something and they're being whisked away from the scene. I don't know what circumstance that might be. You know, that it's, there isn't time. In hospital circumstances, it can be a little bit like that. Things have to be necessarily abbreviated. But it's always valid. Always, Geraldine, always valid, again, uh, when the priest does that. And again, it's not because, um, uh, or rather I suppose it is, because the church stands over the validity of the sacrament when it's exercised as it's intended to be exercised. Um, any other, you know, if I'm trying to think of sort of maybe examples or circumstances where it may not be valid. Um, but no, I uh, again... If, if the priest is, is a reasonably disposed. So it, in, in other words, that it doesn't really matter if the priest seems like it doesn't it seems like the priest didn't understand what we were saying or he's not making a whole lot of sense or he's just in a bad place at a given time or maybe we're in a bad place at a given time. And it's the absolution which matters in the end. So just to reassure you, Geraldine, absolutely that uh, that confession, as you describe it there, most certainly valid from once the priest has pronounced the words of absolution. Uh, that's that's sufficient. We might be dissatisfied, perhaps, with our confessions. We might have felt that we'd lost over things or maybe, again, God forbid, that we deliberately omitted material or matter that we should have confessed. In which case, um, I would... Uh, counsel and advise to get back to confession as soon as the next opportunity allows and to clarify things and just let it out there, spill it out and let it be said without uh, getting too absorbed into scruples either. We don't want to get bogged down in tearing ourselves in, up into little pieces thinking we haven't confessed right or we've left something short or we've, we do the best we can in the words that come to us uh, and, and with the clarity of and the intention of confessing all grave sins in number and in kind. And number, interestingly, is, is significant. And if it is, we simply can't remember how many times. Well, many times. Uh, or how few times? Well, you know, a few times. Um, you know, it is that we can't just recall. We don't keep a sort of record or a sort of a... <laughs> a shopping list of it. Um, we simply cover the area sufficient that the priest understands. Because I might have addictive habit. You know, I got drunk many times since my last confession in the last month. Well, that's there's a serious difficulty going on there because we shouldn't be getting drunk many times at all and certainly not in the space of a month. Whereas I got drunk twice in the last month gives a better picture that maybe help is needed but... Uh, the problem isn't as grave. Uh, it's only top of the head type of instant now. Instance. Um, same would be true then of other habits or weeds that keep accumulating in the soul. Um, so very good. Uh, thanks, uh, Simon. Just uh, watching in there and on Facebook as well. And indeed, the Legion of Mary is a great apostolate, Simon. And we pray every blessing upon you now as you're 
your healing there in, in hospital at the moment. So uh, thank you for that. Lovely to have you tuned in and, and watching and connecting in with us today as well. So this is the great blessing of our faith that I just like this opportunity to be able to chat, as it were, touch in on those questions and share them with you and uh, encourage you as well. So, uh, so very good. Uh, thanks indeed for that. Now, very good. May God bless and be with you. I see my time is, is coming to a close, as it often does, and far too rapidly. Uh, do stay with us. This is Wednesday now, so we will have um, your say at quarter past 12. And please God, I'll join Cathy then at half past uh, 12 too for um, join the team and just an update on all the lovely promotion that has been going on the last while. And please God, will continue to go on. Even though Sarah now has marched on and left us and we'll be starting with the Dominicans soon as well. We wish her every grace and every blessing. And we do hope we can find a worthy replacement uh, for Sarah before too long and uh, continue on at the same pace with God's help. So just to thank you again, as always, for your fellowship. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your listenership. We're greatly encouraged and animated and strengthened by that. And please do drop a comment here on Facebook or YouTube. Please do like, share, follow, subscribe. Please do connect in. Please do pose your questions and any challenging topics or subjects you might like to have addressed. I'll be happy indeed to bring them to the microphone too. So very good. It's approaching 12 o'clock. So we might just pause now. We'll allow our Angelus bells to give us a little brief respite and we'll return with our Angelus and our midday prayer. <laughs> 